Okay, so um, yeah, we just had a very brief. What's? Do you mind giving me, like, telling me your name or how I should address you? Chaz. 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 All right, I'm Kay. So you feel that you potentially don't want to identify as a Christian anymore, or you're not, not anymore. sure not about? Anymore. Not anymore. Okay, and do you have any uh, strongly held convictions that seem to be at odds with Christianity? Like, have you got some? things that I could maybe help you okay, so look at differently. Okay, so in Christianity you have denominations. Yes. So you have Baptists, you have Roman Catholic, you yes. have um, Lots. Presbyterian. So you have Protestantism with a lot of denominations, Orthodoxy yeah. and Catholicism. Yeah. And you have Baptists. Baptists they are a in, Protestant definite. Uh, yeah, they believe in full immersion. So yes. when you're baptised yes. as a Baptist Christian, you're fully immersed. Yes. You go all the way down and up again. Sure. And it represents the, the death, burial, and resurrection. Death, resurrection. Death, burial, and resurrection of yes. Jesus Christ. I'm not a Baptist, but I can speak for Christianity. Okay, so in the Baptist faith, if you're a Baptist, you have something called the dedication. Okay. So when somebody grows up, they can choose to be a Christian or, or choose not to be a Christian. And, and what does their baptism avail them then? Everybody can choose not to be a Christian. That's not solely restricted to the Baptists. Okay, so all I'm saying is, is that my understanding of being a Christian is that it's about humility. No. No? No. It's so, not. so give me, encapsulate for me what your... Um, ah, okay. I, I'm going to go back to holding for myself. Thank you, uh, P. Hold on one second, love. Right, so, um, okay, so what, so if you had to say name maybe three things that encapsulated Christianity, so you say humility, what are the other, t like, two if you have them, and then I'll try and tell you what it does actually uh, involve. Okay, so life is about self-preservation, right? Yep. So, no, 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 I think Sorry. it is. You think it is, that's great, yeah. I think you... Sorry, to, I, I want to focus on what okay. is Christianity, and okay. I'll, uh, maybe I'll tell you and then you see where we differ. So humility is um, is an attribute of love, I guess. It's, it's a, a, you can't be truly loving if you're not humble enough to see your own part in things. And, you know, like, so humility is, is not a bad thing. Although um, a false humility or too much humility will prevent you from uh, standing firm on maybe your faith. Christianity isn't um, only about any one thing other than love. So God so loved the world that um, he sent Christ to die for us. So in a nutshell, not Christianity as an organized religion, but uh, the uh, relationship of humanity to God is through Christ only. That's what Christianity states. And Christ's two greatest commandments were love. Um, and love covers a multitude of sins. And love doesn't boast. Um, it isn't jealous. It doesn't keep a record of wrongs. It forgives easily. Um, without love, the Bible tells us we are nothing. So other, as opposed to humility, I would uh, posit that love is actually the core doctrine of Christianity. So do you have a problem with love? That's a facetious question, but I mean, what, if, if you look at it that way, because also baptism for me is not a salvific issue. The, the baptism is an, a declaration of a faith already held. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit has occurred by that time. Because if, for example, you're in Indonesia, and you may be beheaded for being publicly baptised, don't do it, is my advice. You know what I mean? Like, God is not waiting on that contract. Unless you be baptised, you will not see the kingdom. Um, the Bible does say that. But in order to be saved, what the Bible, what the Holy Spirit says through Paul is that believe in your heart that God raised Christ from the dead and confess with your mouth that Christ is Lord and you will be saved. It doesn't say anything about and be humble and be fully submerged and be partially baptised. Okay. You see what I mean? Um, I grew up in the 90s, right? And I remember a time when you could knock on someone's door and they'd invite you in for a cup of tea and a chat. Yeah. A cup of tea, a bit of cake. Yeah, less knives and madness yeah. around. Yeah. People used to communicate verbally. Yes. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. But now, all I see now is that it's almost as if people don't want to know each other anymore. And I think it's really sad. And do you put that at the door of Christianity? No. Okay. So let's get back to, I, I mean, I don't want to like browbeat you, but if you had a, like, what's your number one reservation for yourself? Like, do you feel like maybe you don't fully believe the reality of, of a creator? Or is it not that? Is it I something believe, to do with the requirements? Because there are none. I believe that creation, other than, creation points to creator. Yes, and, and the Bible says that creation in and of itself displays the divinity of God. So that on judgment day, none... Nobody's going to have an excuse to say, well, I didn't know. 
if you see what I'm saying, because it's evident, like you say, that if something is in existence, it must have a source. And to say that all things came from nothing is not only scientifically improbable, but also, you know, it's not the case. The Big Bang is is uh, in alignment with Christianity in as much as we just add that there's a Big Banger, of course. <laughs> like, everything did not come from nothing. That's not phys physics, that's not science. It's supposed to have come from something infinitely small and infinitely dense, but um, still that spark was required and, and God is to, you know, within my estimation, the creator. So, you, I, so I the creator in, is fine. I believe in God. Yeah. Do you I, believe in Yahweh, like the yes. God of the Bible? Yes. Okay. And do you believe that Christ is the manifestation of the second person of God, like the eternal I, son? I believe that Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. I, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. So what's your problem? I know that's another like okay, so important question. My problem with Christianity is that the Bible is so deep, yep. so profound, sure. that there are things that are written in the Bible that we may never fully understand in this lifetime. Yes. That's what I think. Yes, and why would that cause you to not want to have the revelation of eternity? Like, do you see what I mean? Like, salvation assures you, uh, uh, for one, that you're not in hell for eternity, and secondly, that anything that has been uh, revealed on paper, as it were, but the meat of the scripture, like the nuance and the deeper meaning, hasn't come to you yet by the, uh, at the time of your departure from this life. Why wouldn't you want to assure that you're in the right setting, as it were, for eternity to to, to be able to, to worship um, and glorify when God? When I was about 15 or 16, I, I asked Jesus Christ into my life yeah. and I accepted him as my Lord and Saviour. That was when I was a teenager. Yeah. But ever since my teens, when I was in my 20s and my 30s, I used to go out clubbing, I used to just I not... think you're the only one yeah. on the planet, is it? No, I'm joking. No. So did I. I used to go yeah. clubbing all the time. Me too. All the time. Me too. Days and days and long time. Yeah, I've got some uh, stuff. Yeah. But what, did, what do you think? Do you think that God is that arbitrary that... Um, like, do you think forgiveness comes from something you did or something Jesus did? Nothing you can do will um, make God love you any less. That's a blessing. Absolutely nothing you can do because he loves you perfectly because his love is the is where all other love is reflected from, if that makes sense. Like, he is the... He is, he's not only good, he is goodness. He's not only loving, he is love. He can't love us any less because of his nature. He doesn't love us because of who we are or because of who we aren't. He loves us because of who he is, you see? Yeah. So that's helpful to look at because I remember a brother of mine didn't uh, necessarily want to go to church when he was clubbing a lot and living a life that was less. Than, nobody lives a perfect life. If they tell you they have, they've just lied <laughs> and are therefore imperfect again. So perfection won't happen until the end, past the end, beyond the end of this life. But things, so because nothing good can get you into heaven other than the blood of Christ, nothing bad can take you away because forgiveness is absolute, unless you're blaspheming the spirit, that's another, like that's just one caveat. Other than that, God grants repentance. If you earnestly seek, he will meet you where you are. So he's a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. Uh, he's a lover of, yeah, yeah, he's, a, it, no, I don't say a rewarder, but he will meet you. That is a reward in and of itself. It says, it says in the Bible, go into the secret place and your father who sees what you've done in yes, secret will that's reward, for you. Prayer. reward you that's yes, for prayer yes yes that's for prayer yeah but it, that's a caveat to the uh to some of the, well, the pharisees i believe who used to ostensibly uh, ostentatiously even pray on the street corners and whiten their face to make them look when they were fasting to make them look more pious so what christ is saying is it's not about the outward because we see um that yeah, anyway, we see that, um, we see, sorry, I've lost my train of thought from the little uh, boy there. Yes, we see that when, when Yahweh searches the hearts and minds of men, when Christ comes and says, I tell you, it's not enough not to murder, but actually I'm going to tell you don't hate, it's because go away, <laughs> you will be. <laughs> right, I'm sorry, I can't even see my screen, but I can see donuts when I... Uh, when I feel my sugar That's levels funny. going. That's really funny. <laughs> I try. Um, yeah, so anyway, sorry. So it's not about our actions. 
praying when you're living a life of honestly mate do you love me <laughs> sorry that's I'm not very christian but i'm quite impatient today um oh gosh it's not the actions it's not even if you kill someone. In the Old Testament, Yahweh creates a place uh, for the manslayer. If you haven't got hatred in your heart and you accidentally kill somebody, he creates a way out of that, an actual physical place where you go and you okay. wait. So what I'm trying to say is it's the intention of your heart. Like you say, if you go in secret and pray, one, that shows that Yahweh sees into your heart. He's not relying on your actions to deem you worthy or unworthy. Because if he did that, we are all rightfully condemned and under the wrath. All of us, even in your thought life, there is not a day that goes past that I don't sin. And there's, there are days that go past when I don't repent. God grants the repentance, but like if I get really angry, I know that if I, like a shallow sense, if I say I'm sorry when I'm not, I'm going to do that thing again. Like if I like hurt your feelings and I say I'm sorry, but I've got no intention of changing anything of you see what i'm saying like that it's a metanoia is a changing metanoia. of the heart that's metanoia. repent repent it mean in the greek metanoia it means a, a changing of heart so it's it's Where one thing uh, well the, the new testament is it was originally in koine greek koine yeah so i didn't learn greek but i know some of the greek meanings from the concordance um like there's a book of the words if that makes sense Can I ask you something? yeah sure what translation of the bible do you read the web the world english bible and the reason i like it is because it's quite a literal translation it's my only like niggle is that some of my favorite verses don't sound the same because it's literal but when it it doesn't say lord in capital it says yahweh and i like that because i'm not a jew have i have you, no like a have you ever read 1 corinthians 14. i've read the entire bible a few okay, times so yeah. it reminds me is it um love it talks about a banging symbol it without talks about, love no no that's 1 second. corinthians 13. Ah, okay. 1 corinthians 14 talks about um glossolalia Glossolalia means speaking in unknown tongues, yes. which is biblical. Yes. The laying on of hands is biblical. Yes. Speaking in tongues is biblical. I know. It's a heavenly language. Yes. But it has to be authentic. Yes, of course. And you and one must have an interpreter. Paul goes on to say that if you're going to pray between prophecy and, and speaking in tongues, because the spirit, the Bible tells us, deems which of the gifts we will be given. And my uh, strong feeling and understanding is that many not all times the spirit will gift us with something that we're already au fait with if we're good at teaching in a secular sense the spirit may give us the gift of uh, like spiritually edifying people through teaching because we've already got the the bones of the skill there and then it's like more um edified by the spirit but back to the um speaking in tongues and stuff there is high there is um some dispute within the Christian community like uh, Pentecostals I believe are quite heavy into if you're not speaking in tongues is it Pentecostals? Yeah I think so that uh, you're not saved or you don't have the visible display of it but Paul says prophecy is for outside of the church he doesn't mean go outside and do it he means that it will attract others to us because they can see the veracity of god's word when it comes to pass what does veracity mean? the truth the truth yeah when the when the prophecy comes to pass people go oh my gosh there's something in what that guy said i wonder where he got the info and it's obviously from god whereas speaking in tongues he says if you have no one to interpret them you look like a bunch of nutters that's the cockney translation but what he means is if someone steps in in the middle of everyone speaking in tongues it's not it's not a, a winsome, it's not an attractive way of drawing people to the truth of Christ because it's just skiddly widdly. I just feel like worshipping now, I feel like singing now. Go on, son! Okay, I so, um, that's come and have Jesus, something to eat with us afterwards. Jesus, con tu espiritu, aviva me, aviva me con tu poder, Jesus. Jesus, come to a spirit Aviva men, aviva men, come to poder. Thank you, amen. Hallelujah. So I feel like, hopefully, I mean, yeah, I, I'm prayerfully hopeful that you'll consider like some of the things that we've discussed and, and look at, and come again or even come out and have something to eat with us at about uh, in about an hour okay. if you're still around I because feel another one coming on go for it okay um I'm just trying to remember it um no, it'll come to you yesterday today and forever you were the same you never change yesterday today and forever 
You are the same. You never change. Brilliant. I have some Jesus favorites, Christ. but I won't Jesus be Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is. He, he was and is and is to come. From eternity to eternity. Jesus Christ, the man, obviously came at a set point. But prior to that, he was the word who became flesh. The bit in the Bible I like the most is, is John chapter 4, where he meets the woman at the well. And she said, Sir, I perceive a prophet. So he could see through her. Yeah. He said, the woman, the man that you're now with is not your husband. And yes. she, she didn't understand he why she was talking to He also says, if her. you knew who was asking you for the water, like uh, you wouldn't be giving me the answer. He says, I am the, uh, the eternal water. If you drink from this of this water you'll never first meaning and that's an, an uh, allusion as it were back to the old testament where they spoke about the um like uh, the heavenly water like the uh, from which all life springs because the life that we've got here is temporal and temporary um and that's a fact but because we are we were made perfect initially our life won't cease it's just where it will go and like i mean one could argue that hell is life without god even on earth like that's the a classical definition of hell is just the absence of god the same way that evil is the absence of good if you see what i mean but um woe to you who no call good to... evil and evil good yep and don't repay evil for evil all of those see the thing is it sounds advice even if you don't have a personal connection that's why I often find it difficult when people are arguing against the Bible to defend their own belief that has nothing to do with it really it's just like ad hominem but um yeah I don't want to overload you with stuff but I'm always like I'll give you my channel name and that channel name so if you have any questions we've got some lovely admins who are like mainly Christian <laughs> yeah I There's just come here I just come here to chill out nice I might even just walk around the serpentine now you're more than welcome to um, to come that way with us when we go uh, for like a sandwich, something to eat or whatever. Other than that, this is called SOCO Films, S-O-C-O, -O, and it stands for Soldiers of Christ Online. So SOCO Films, if you is put that, that in. Yeah, it's an acronym, more correctly. So Soldiers of Christ Online, S-O-C-O. And this is Kay Soko Films because I'm Kay. Okay, nice to meet you. Chaz, it's been a blessing. Thank nice you so much. You. Please think about what we've discussed and uh, the feelings maybe that were evoked for you and uh, do some I, I thinking. I don't think there's anything wrong with getting an emotional. No, neither do I. No, I'm saying ponder the fact that we started the conversation with some doubts and uh, if you feel moved to sing, you can bet your bottom dollar something's going on. So God will meet you where you are. You Thank don't you. have to do too much legwork. Just pray. Okay. Boom, shakalaka. Sorry, everyone. Oh, I love a bit of Jesus. I love a bit of Jesus. Sorry. Um, I got sung to. Everybody got sung to. I'm not big for public displays of, um, you know, how it. No, leave me alone. It's the mic. It's right here. Anyway, um, right. If you have doubts about that which we have revealed, I'm joking. If you have doubts, um, like that's a brilliant example of uh, the benefit of actually approaching a, a brother or sister if you feel that they are that or somebody. Uh, you know, we can often speak to strangers uh, more intimately than we can speak to those who we uh, love or consider family because there's less pressure of like what they're going to think of me kind of thing. Jesus is the way and he is the truth and without him you will have no life either, either here or in the hereafter. You won't become the person uh, God has deemed that you are to become without the blood of Christ. So uh, let's pray for Chaz. Uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully he gets back on the path. It's only the Holy Spirit who can... Uh, help us conform our thoughts to the image of Christ. It's the mind that's the problem, not the heart. Remember that. And uh, yeah, love's the answer. Jesus is the way. What more do you want? God bless. See you later.